Pierre Omidyar, born in 1936. Omidyar's unworldly ideals led to the electronic bazaar known as eBay. If you've ever bought or sold anything on the eBay web auction site, and many millions of people have, you may marvel at the business acumen that made its founder a billionaire many times over. Pierre Omidyar is certainly a high-flying moneymaker, but that is the least important thing about him and his creation. More than anything else, eBay is a manifestation of trust, a celebration of community, an affirmation of equality. Had it been otherwise, it would not have become and remain a wildfire success. Omidyar was born in Paris but was brought up in Maryland after his Iranian-born father took up a medical residency at Johns Hopkins. Omidyar majored in computer science at Tufts and Berkeley, then designed a program enabling Mac users to draw pictures and took it to Claris, an Apple spin-off that Donna Dubinsky, later of Palm Pilot fame, had helped to start. Omidyar left Claris when Apple reabsorbed the company. Like Dubinsky, he got into pen-based computers, but with less success. The Inc. Development Corporation he and some friends from Claris started in 1991 was dead in 18 months. What survived were some online software tools they had developed, and they diverted these into an electronic retailing site, eShop, that sold goods over proprietary networks. Omidyar was more interested in how the free internet might develop, so he left in 1994, though he kept his stock which made him a millionaire in 1996. Living in Silicon Valley in the heyday of the internet bubble, Omidyar was uneasy at the disparity of wealth IPOs were creating. An auction seemed to Omidyar the perfect antithesis and the internet the perfect vehicle for its expression. Everybody who took part had an equal chance at the same time and could see what everybody else was doing. With a few clicks of a mouse, seemingly distant sellers and buyers would be able to interact equitably. But Omidyar dreamed of a website that was more than a marketplace. He says, The first commercial efforts were from larger companies that were saying, gee, we can use the internet to sell stuff to people. Clearly, if you're coming from a democratic, libertarian point of view, having corporations just cram more products down people's throats doesn't seem a lot of fun. I really wanted to give the individual the power to be a producer as well. It was letting the users take responsibility for building the community, even building the website. That sounds like a recipe for chaos, but seminal studies by Columbia University's Douglas Watts and Cornell University's Stephen Strogatz have suggested that small world networks are more resistant than top-down hierarchies. There is a name for the spontaneous rise of structure out of random connections. It's called emergence. It can be seen throughout nature in civilizations, in the bustling stasis of cities, in the neuronal networks of the brain. So Imidia was in tune with a growing body of thinking, though he did not know it when he mused about a digital democracy. He founded a web consulting company called Echo Bay Technology Group, but for his personal website, he had to have a different name than Echo Bay Technology, which was already taken. So he called it eBay.com. It was a mishmash. One subsite expressed his preoccupation with the killer Ebola virus. Another was his fiancée's promotion of a small biotech company, and what he called auction web became a third element all run out of a spare bedroom as a hobby, a break from his day job in programming. He circulated auction web invitations on the Usenet groups, saying, the most fun buying and selling on the web. Omidyar's first inkling that he might be onto something came after the laser pointer he had bought for $30 stopped emitting the red dot he had used to make his cat pounce. 
on auction web Omidia typed broken laser pointer and asked for bids starting at a dollar. The first week there were no bidders. The second week he had an offer of three dollars, then four dollars. At the end of two weeks he had let it go for fourteen dollars, amazed that people were willing to pay good money for stuff others considered junk. It took several days for a few visitors to come to the site after it officially opened on September the 12th, 1995, with an utterly unpredictable list of items from sellers. A Superman lunchbox for $22, autographed Marky Mark underwear for $400, an autographed Michael Jackson poster for $400, a 1989 Toyota Tercel for $3,200, a health club membership in Chicago for $400.